Pat Love with Love Healing Hearts. With another comment from one of, our, one of our YouTube family members, listen to this. This one was a comment to encourage me, but I am relaying it to you because everyone goes through physical issues from time to time and God can deliver us out of them all. So listen to this. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Psalms 118, verse 17. While praying just now, Pat, I felt led to share with you a scripture I literally live by. Take this verse at least three times a day out loud. <laughs> as often as is necessary, you can't overdose. <laughs> because when you start fighting this battle spiritually, you have to know that the battle is on. Keep watch for things that look to steal your faith, to believe, and it looks it it, it to to what to it looks to sow in doubt. The enemy will probably come in with a little bit of congestion, for instance, to cause you to doubt or fear that you may have to go through that again. Don't believe him. Don't take the bait. First thing he did when my battle was on was give me a sharp stabbing pain at the sight. As soon as I was resting at home, I knew immediately it was the thief. I just rebuked that pain. I did not receive it and commanded it to go in the name of Jesus. And it went. In the authority of Jesus' name. Okay, let me continue. This verse came to me regarding your condition, and you will add this to your arsenal. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Isaiah 59, 19. Amen. Love you, Pat. Listen, I know that to be true. Because after going into the hospital four times, it was my first time in my life I was ever in the hospital in the first place. But you know, the doctor told me just two weeks ago, we weren't sure you were going to make it. But God had the final word. Now, after the fourth visit, I came home, I did really well, and then all of a sudden it started up again, and I was feeling lousy and the shortness of breath, and I was like, Lord, can I fight this at home with you? I just don't want to go back to the hospital. I want you to take care of me. And guess what? Within a week, hasta la bye-bye, it was gone. And thank God to this day, that was two months ago, it has never come back. So I stand on God's word that I am healed. You hear me? And this is a confirmation. He doesn't know this. But when I was in the hospital, I'm trying not to get emotional. I feel it coming. When I was in the hospital, I asked the Lord if this was my time and if I needed to get my house in order, my paperwork in order, and tell me who to give my house to. They would still have to make house payments, but who should I give the house to? Give me time to get all that notarized and all that situated. I asked the Lord this. I, I said, Lord, is it time? Are you getting ready to call me home? And I asked the Lord to give me scripture. Well, that particular time, I didn't I didn't have my Bible. I just, you know, I just scooted to the hospital, barely with anything in my hand but my keys and my ID. And um, And what happened was a friend of mine called me while I was in the bed. Shortly after I prayed that prayer, and I asked her, I said, do you have your Bible close by? And she said, yeah. And I said, well, I said, the Lord gave me <laughs> Psalms 118. I asked the Lord a question. I want to see what it says. I told her what I asked the Lord. Is this my time? Are you going to call me home? This is what I got. Verse 17, I believe in 18 or verse 16 and 17. They're both like back to back. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. 
Now she read the whole chapter, but I knew this was the answer. And the other verse said, the Lord has not given me over unto death. When you get a word from God like that, you can stand on it, baby. That's better than money in the bank. God's promises are sure. He does not go back on his word. He is not a man that he should lie. He will not give you false hope. When he says it, baby, hey, you can go to sleep on that bad boy because you're going to be okay. Let me give you a, a, a quick scenario. On the last, the third procedure, I think it was the third procedure. The last procedure. I'm trying, you know how we are when we get old, we have to get it together, even though you don't care which one, third or fourth. But anyway, the, the last procedure, I was under anesthesia. And when I woke up, let me tell you how God will keep you in perfect peace when you keep your mind stayed on him. When I woke up, I was totally paralyzed. Totally. I could not move. I could not speak. My hands wouldn't budge. My feet wouldn't budge. I was totally paralyzed. So I said, well, Lord, I guess this is the anesthesia and I'm not all out yet. So I'm going to go back to sleep. Take care of me, please. And I went to sleep. Now, I lay there for a good 10 or 15 minutes trying to make something do something to no avail. When I went back to sleep, they woke me up after they rolled me in my room. They said, you got two visitors. And I said, oh, I was still high from the medication, but I was moving, baby. I said, oh, good. My eyes were swimming around. <laughs> I was still moving my hands, my legs. Everything was back to normal. Only God. And they put the thing down in my, you know, in my, uh, you know, through my esophagus or whatever you call it, trachea, in order for me to breathe. I wasn't going to be able to breathe. So they had a breathing machine breathing for me. I was very comfortable. But do you know I never got a sore throat? And some people, they have some issues afterwards. I never did. <laughs> God is trustworthy. Trust him with everything, especially your life. Amen. All right. I'm done with that one. Amen.